My name is Erica. I am a clinical sexologist and certified sex coach, and I have private practice here. I'm based in Salt Lake City, Utah, and I see adults of all genders and sexual orientations. I specialize in women in midlife and beyond and their partners, uh, but I do see the variety of, of clients and um, it is the greatest joy of my life. I was trained as a marriage and family therapist um, probably about 30 years ago. And just through life and experience and circumstance, everyone kept talking to me about sex. And I didn't feel like I had a scope of practice then to be able to really delve into that. But people always felt very comfortable talking to me about sexuality and all of those things. So I actually went back to school uh, later in life and and um, I just knew it was my passion to be able to have a comfortable conversation about sex. So that's really interesting. You feel like in your marriage and family counseling uh, practice that people were mainly talking about sex. The majority of people were coming to me and asking about sex. Yes. And in that profession, there are very few classes that actually even talk about sexuality. I mean, I think I remember having one human sexuality class for my master's program and everything else was kind of left to our own devices. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> right. and exactly. Yeah. And that is interesting that you'd have one class about sexuality and yet that seems to be the majority of the issues when you're doing marriage and family counseling. They revolve around people's sexuality. Exactly, exactly. So I felt that I wanted to gain more knowledge. And I actually did a lot of research. And I went through uh, the Sex Coach U program. I don't know if you know, Dr. Patty Britton, she's the mother of sex coaching. And I actually ended up working, finding them and going through their program. And it was, I wish I would have had that information 30 years ago. I was peeking on your Instagram and you have a little quote on there, which is helping women find joy in expressing their sexuality. Why is it important to express our sexuality? Why not just let it be dormant? <laughs> well, because I think our part of our sexual energy is a part of our whole, right? So we have our, our life wheel, right? That has all of the, that, you know, our wellness, our, our social aspects, our hobbies, our spirituality. I think sexuality has to be on that, on that wheel to create that sense of wellness and wholeness. And I think if we're lacking that, then we feel it. I think we store that energy in our body. And if it's not expressed in a healthy way or however we choose to, it stays there. And I think that it's really important to be able to be able to breathe and to accept us for who we are as individuals. And I think a part of it is, I mean, we're sexual beings at birth. We see all the time that the models and our members face a lot of stigma for wanting to have this job or explore their sexuality and their pleasure. They're judged for it and they're made to feel like it's not okay. And a lot of them have to hide it. Um, why is that? Especially when, you know, if you take something like Life Jasmine, where no one actually touches ever, <laughs> it's actually very much a virtual relationship, if you will. Why don't we feel like people have the right to explore their pleasure, even if it's in such a contained and distant environment, such as virtually? Sure. Well, I think that a lot of us, I think, aren't given permission to be able to do so. And I think that comes from our upbringing, our you know, societal norms and our culture, depending on where you happen to be. But I think we have sexual scripts that we we grow up from a very early age. So if we are, if we're taught or we're caught, I should say, if we're caught masturbating at three years old and our caregiver comes in and says, that's bad, don't do that. That's, you know, we're getting information that our pleasure is not okay, that it's dirty, that it's undeserving. And then if you have another experience that reinforces that, then it just keeps reinforcing that it's not okay. And I think that is, that needs to change from, I think a very young age 
you know, and so you have me, I'm almost 53. And as a young person, I thankfully wasn't given those messages, but I can tell you probably everyone else that I knew and grew up with had, had a, a situation like that, that really influenced how they saw themselves. And then as they got older, that informed how they became sexual or not, or if it was undercover or, you know, it was under, it was a cloak and dagger, right? Because you didn't want anyone to know because it was shameful because you felt shame because you were shamed from a very young age. What I'm hearing you say basically is we have been programmed, all of us, to reject our pleasure at a young age. You gave an example of maybe a child who's learning about their body and they may be caught touching themselves and they're told you don't do that. That's, that's, I mean, we call it private part. You know what I mean? Like it's exactly many people. I think they have that experience, but I think there are others too, who have not, and it's such a joy. So I'll give you an example. I have a 20 year old daughter. She is in the adult entertainment industry. And she told me a week after she turned 18, mom, guess what I'm doing? So I could have done a lot of things, right? I could have said, that's awful. I don't want you to do that. That's, that's bad. That's, you know, what, I mean, I could have done a million different, had a different million different reactions that could have potentially been negative for me. This is what she wants to do. I want to accept, I want to embrace and support her to the best of my ability because this is her path and this is what she wants to do. So it's the autonomy. It's just that sense of independence and her feeling very secure in herself that this is what she wants to do. I feel very grateful that I was the kind, or I am the kind of parent who is accepting of, of my daughter who is in this industry. Cause there are a lot of people out there who, who would not be so much. And I get criticized a lot from other people. Why, why are you accepting of this? And I said, because it's, it's what she wants to do. It's her pleasure. It's her right. So even as a parent, I don't have the right to control her, to tell her what to do. And I think that there is a lot more that needs to be done in order just for just pure acceptance in general. Yeah, that's really interesting because, you know, and part of, so I don't know exactly what facet of adult, uh, adult work or entertainment that she's in, but essentially all of it comes down to helping other people unlock their own pleasure in some way. And I'm curious, you know, usually those who are consuming either adult content or some type of sex work, those are typically people that are not having their sexual needs met in their day-to-day life. And so they're seeking out another way to get those needs met. I mean, I know you've been a marriage and family counselor, you've been a sex coach. What are some of the consequences that you see people face if they just repress it, like we mentioned earlier, and they don't express their sexual needs or desires and they don't find an avenue? Let me give you an example. Um, We have members that are either recently divorced and it was a nasty divorce, so they don't really want to date, but they're still needing intimacy. We have members that have really severe disabilities and they're inside their home. And so they're not able to have a normal social life, but they're still needing intimacy. Um, If they were to not be seeking it out through Life Jasmine, what are potential consequences that people face when they don't express this part of themselves? It's a great question. I think it goes back to finding a way that we can become whole. So if we are missing that part of that, that fullness of our lives, I I mean, a variety of depression, anxiety, fear, illness, you know, I mean, so much of what we know is when we don't express stuff and we have things that get stuck, it stays in our bodies, right? And it manifests in a, in a myriad of ways. Um, and if it's not expressed properly, then oftentimes I think there are some negative um, outcomes that come from that. And I think that, you know, it's, I mean, you, I see that in my own practice. And as a, as a sex coach, my job is really to give my client or clients permission to be where they are right now and go after those goals that they desire without shame, without guilt, 
and with a full sense of autonomy and aliveness within themselves. And, but it's scary, right? It's scary to be able to put yourself out there because you don't, you don't know it's, it's risking, it's risking yourself when you put yourself out there in such a vulnerable way. But I think that's also the strongest thing that we can do for ourselves is to be open and to be receptive. And I think the world would be so much a better place if we could all just not feel that sense of judgment and not judge others and just allow us to walk our own paths. You know, our pleasure is our pleasure and it's our birthright. So why not celebrate that? whatever it might be, right? My, my tastes and your tastes are completely different, but, and that's all okay. It's all, if we can accept that within ourselves, I think all of our lives would be so much better off. I still, I'm really stuck on this point of if someone is not causing harm to another human being and they are an adult, I, I'm confused as to why we think we need to judge them or it's our business to even know what they're doing or to judge what they're doing. Or if there's no harm that's being created, why is it that we're so obsessed with what other people do behind their closed doors in their bedroom? Ignorance, fear, fear of the unknown. But I think it's, I think it goes, it, I think a lot of it comes down to ignorance and just the unknowing of what, might be out there i think for a lot of people there's a lot of fear around that because then they don't they don't know how to deal with that right we are creatures of habit we don't like change and for for people who are not comfortable with themselves expressing their sexuality i think that kind of bleeds into them then judging others for the same so i think it really does come down to just being ignorant to be to be completely honest <laughs> Over that 30-year period, are there any recurring issues that you've seen in patients or clients that stand out? You know, I think it really, I and I, I see primarily women, um, although I see lots, see lots of, of their partners as well, but I would say one thing that I've seen predominantly is women just really feeling uncomfortable about expressing themselves sexually. And again, I think it goes back to the judgment. They don't feel like they're, or they don't feel worthy. They don't feel deserving of their pleasure and, and it stays within them and it affects the rest of everything that they do. It's like this, it's like this energy, this ball of energy that's stayed within them. That needs to be, it needs to be expressed, but there's so much fear that's, beyond it that they just want to kind of keep that keep that in there and keep it safe because they don't know what to do with it so I think it goes back to again again about fear and the unknown and what do we know about that when we do something that we don't think that is possible and we achieve that you know and we we see how resilient and we see how empowering and strong that we can be as women I think that there's so much there's so much expansion that can happen when, when we can get to a state where we feel like whatever we want, whatever we want to go after sexually and otherwise is well within our rights to do and taking action on that and making things happen for ourselves. Yeah. Really interesting. It kind of goes back to something you mentioned earlier. It sounds like what you're saying is that women, um, you know, struggle with the confidence to express themselves sexually, because like you said, we're born sexual and we are because we are born to reproduce and to populate the earth. That's still part of our DNA, a drive in our DNA is to reproduce. Um, In order to do that, you have to be sexual, you know? And so it sounds like you're saying you've seen a lot of women who just don't feel like they've gotten that permission or that confidence to get to know themselves. And that, you know, it really is interesting because that is one of the things that a lot of live Jasmine models say and that they really value about their career on Jasmine and in the adult entertainment industry is that they were able to explore themselves through the members. You know, a member would want to act out a fantasy and they would do it and realize, wow, I really liked that too. Or I won't do that again. Now I know that I have a hard boundary there. 
but they wouldn't have known unless they had gone there, you know, and experienced that, explored that. And these women have a lot of them just unapologetically taken control of their pleasure and other people's pleasure. And I can see why in general with how society is, that's a little bit threatening for our societal structure because our societal structure doesn't really allow for that. Yeah. Well, and giving ourselves a sense of freedom and autonomy, right. And be able to set our own schedule, you know, so, you know, with, with the the models, I mean, they have their, the ability to set their own schedules, to make money on their own terms, right. To be able to do things that are going to help just them and their families, if they have children, if whatever stage of life that they're in, I think there's so much empowerment that comes from being able to do this for themselves in a way that a nine to five job wouldn't satisfy. Absolutely. What are your thoughts on sex tech? It's coming, it's here and it ain't going away. If anything else, it's just going to ramp up. I mean, there I'm excited about the future when it comes to sex tech. And I mean, just the VR aspect, I mean, that alone is just mind boggling to me. (laughs) I'm still like trying to wrap my head around like, what is it going to be like another 10, 15, 20 years from now? Right. Yeah. I think, you know, and in all of this social media, camming, all stripping, all of those ways for us to be able to find ways to express ourselves sexually is extremely empowering and giving, giving others really a chance to connect. And I think that's, that's the thing that I think that we're finding too, is it's not just about sexual gratification. It's about that deeper connection, that social connection that I think a lot of us are missing pre COVID during COVID and even post COVID. I think that we're trying to relearn how to to come back to society, come back to how do we, you know, express ourselves sexually since we've had two plus years of, you know, just a lot of fear and anxiety around just being with another person, let alone, you know, having, you know, being that close to another person, you know, or persons, you know. Absolutely. Do you think that the reason why people engage in sex work is just sexual or are there other underlying needs that are being met that aren't so obvious? I would say it goes well beyond expressing themselves sexually or receiving sexual gratification. I think it has to do with, again, social connection, even friendship and establishing that intimacy between that with, you know, with another person. And I think that's a big, I think that's a big draw you know, that person is having, the member is having a moment with the model that can be, it's going to be so extremely intimate, right? It's intimate and being able to be seen and held and not even if not physically, but just being held within that space when you're connecting with another person is so incredibly, I mean, I think we all need that as humans. We need to feel that connection. So I think there's a variety of ways we can get to that that level. But yeah, I think it goes way beyond just the sex part of it. How vital is connection to our well-being, human connection? I think we die if we didn't have it. Or we'd be very ill and unfunctioning. In my, in, in my opinion, I, I thrive on connection. And even if I'm, I can be a very solitary person sometimes, but having that sense of connection, community, communion, I think is vital to, I think vital to our survival, quite honestly. And within that too, is be able to thrive within community, thrive within ourselves as individuals into that collective. So being seen, being heard, being known i mean maybe for some of these people they they don't maybe their social lives they don't have big social lives outside of or maybe maybe it's non-existent i don't know but being able to have that that connection where it could be a screen it doesn't have to be 
you know, physical, but just having that sense, you can feel people's energy from way across another, you know, way across the other side of the world, right? And I think there's so much beauty in just being able to be seen and, and known by another human being. So true. Yeah, absolutely. I've actually heard uh, a researcher liken loneliness to smoking several packs of cigarettes a day as far as the consequences on your health. Mm. That's tough. <laughs> right? That's tough. Yeah. 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 No, I think honestly, yeah, social, social connection and and that ability to just know that we are like we exist, you know, and maybe having someone see our existence within themselves is I think is extremely powerful. Yeah. I agree. Um, do you feel like overall from what you've seen, people are becoming more lonely or less lonely? What's been your observation? I feel very hopeful. I, I think that there are a lot of people who are still trying to figure things out after the pandemic. And I think that there's a lot of hope. I, I would say there there is more on the forefront. And like and like you mentioned, I mean, just having sex tech, having technology can be can be a gateway for someone. And maybe that is their only way of, you know, communicating with another person. So I just wanna I just I feel like it's just hopeful because I can't think of anything other than that. Because I think our humanity it is, you know, I think there's a lot of things that are going on in the world that are that are scary and that are very fear-based. So having something to be able to connect with that brings you a sense of joy and comfort and again, connection, I think is really is really valuable. How do we create a more sex positive society? Well, I think it has to start with us as individuals. Like if I can feel confident and self-accepting within within me and that I was able to express that out to others, I, I see that trickle effect happening, right? So again, I think it's being a role model for other people. And then also just asking questions and having conversation. I don't think we do that enough. I think that we're so isolated and kind of solitary in a lot of ways that we're afraid to ask the questions and have conversations. So I think the more of us that can do this work, do, you know, see, see these, these conversations and have conversations in, in small groups and in larger groups that I think that that's definitely something that can bring about that conversation to make ourselves a more sex positive society. Beautiful. Um, is there anything about sex work or human connection or sexuality that we did not discuss, but that you would, you want people to know? You know, I would think what I would say is it's, it's never too late. I think some people think that they've lived a certain, however many of years, and they've always been a certain way, or I've been this way. And they're fearful of change. And they're so stuck and they're stuck in that rut where they, they don't feel like they can get out. But I think if they allow themselves to look beyond that comfort zone, that they'll find a world that is beautiful and expansive. And it's about being brave and courageous and really stepping into yourself as your own person, your own individual person and exploring what that is and then going out and trying it on. Very well said. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. We do need to shift the paradigm. And and it's great that, um, you know, you guys are helping to create that. And and so thank you for the, you know, thank you for the privilege and the opportunity to, to talk. And I could do this all day long because this is what I love to do. 